Good morning, Pastor Ed here at Hope Lutheran Church in Freehold, New Jersey with online daily devotions for Friday, September the 11th, 2020. Again, our theme for this week's readings is Christians seek reconciliation with other Christians. Unlike yesterday's reading, however, today's is both easily understood and also fits well uh, with our weekly theme. And after yesterday's passage, that's certainly a relief. This one is from Paul's letter to the Galatians, the fifth chapter, verses 13 through 15. And we'll look at that in just a moment. But first, let's open once again with the service of responsive prayer, in particular the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and Martin Luther's morning prayer. Let us begin. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil, so that our life and actions may please you, into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Well, as I said a moment ago, our reading this morning is a rather short one, um, but a powerful one, an important one. Uh, it's from Paul's letter to the Galatians, where he writes, For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. The story is told that in the last days of the Civil War, the Confederate capital of Richmond, Virginia, fell to the Union Army, and Abraham Lincoln insisted on visiting the city soon afterwards. And even though no one knew that he was coming, slaves recognized him immediately, and they thronged around him. Of course, he had liberated them by the Emancipation Proclamation, and now Lincoln's army had set them free. According to Admiral David Porter, an eyewitness, Lincoln spoke to the throng around him. My poor friends, you are free, free as air. You can cast off the name of slave and trample upon it. Liberty is your birthright. But Lincoln also warned them not to abuse their freedom. Let the world see that you merit your freedom, Lincoln said. Don't let your joy carry you into excesses. As someone once pointed out, that freedom that we have in Christ uh, isn't an excuse for disobedience. Um, instead, it really kind of forms us um, and creates a new identity for us. Martin Luther had, a, had an interesting way of, of putting it. Uh, in his treatise on Christian liberty, sometimes called The Freedom of a Christian, um, he set down the, the two following propositions concerning the freedom and the bondage of the Spirit. And this is the way Luther looked at it. A Christian 
is perfectly is a perfectly free Lord of all, subject to none. A Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all, subject to all. You know, the irony in that story about Abraham Lincoln and the slaves is that they were flee freed from enslavement, institutional enslavement, but in love as Christians, those of whom who were Christians, were now willingly serve others out of love, kind of become slaves through love um, to others. So they, they cast out the, the terrible slavery that they had endured, but they embrace the slavery that we have in Christ, the slavery of love, the, 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 the idea that we are to serve others. It's an interesting story about, story about a pastor who was trying to organize some opportunities for people in his church to do service, small acts of kindness as a, as a demonstration of Christ's love in their community. And so he phoned several neighborhood grocery stores and laundromats and asked for permission to serve their customers. And as he talked with this one grocery store employee, the person hesitated and said, I'll need to ask the manager first, but, but let me make sure I understand what you want to do. You want to clean up the parking lot, retrieve shopping carts, hold umbrellas for customers when it's raining, and you don't want anything in return? Yeah, that's, that's right. That's about it, said the minister. And after a long wait on hold, when the, presumably the, the employee went and talked to the manager, he returned to the phone and said, I'm sorry, sir, we can't let you serve our customers because if we, if we let you do it, then we'd have to let everyone else do it too. Wouldn't that be terrible if people were able to just simply go and serve each other? Paul, as in the other places that uh, we talked about this in particular in my sermon last Sunday, um, you know, love is is the one commandment of Scripture. All the others there that, that specify certain things that we should or shouldn't do, it all boils down to, in the end, one commandment, to love your neighbor as yourself. In his book, Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis once wrote, Do not waste your time bothering whether... You love your neighbor, act as if you do. And as soon as we do this, he says, we'll find one of the great secrets. When you're behaving as if you loved someone, you will presently come to love him. If you injure someone you dislike, you'll find yourself disliking him more. If you do him a good turn, you will find yourself disliking him less. So it's not about feeling. We sometimes think about love as, as a feeling, and there's certainly a feeling component to it but love is is an action word especially in scripture and it's to take action it's to take loving actions it's not how you feel it's how you act it's what you do it's not merely what you say it's what you do and how you do it um and so albert schweitzer the great uh, he was he was a lutheran theologian and an organist and and hymn writer and uh, then the studied medicine, became a medical missionary. And he once said, I do not know what your destiny will be. But the one thing I do know is the only, only the ones among you who will be really happy are those who have sought and found how to serve. So we are set free in Christ, free from bondage to sin. But we enslave ourselves as servants to each other, and especially to our neighbor. And what is the neighbor? The great story of the Good Samaritan. Um, you know, the lawyer said, well, you know, who's my neighbor? And Jesus tells the story of this Good Samaritan. People, the religious guys pass by, they leave the guy, you know, beaten on the side of the road. They don't lift a finger to help him. Samaritan comes along, he's there. The black sheep, you know, the 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 the, the uh, of the family, the, the the they belong to the um, uh, the Jewish people to the north of them who had fallen to the Assyrians and were no longer considered to be, you know, the uh, uh, Jews in terms of of their of their worshiping and everything else. And it's this guy, this despised outsider, who helps the man, 
and binds up his wounds, takes them to an end, tells the innkeeper, take care of him, uh, feed him, help him. Um, here's some money. When I come back around, if you've spent anything more, I will pay you then what else you may have spent. And so Jesus says, you know, who was a neighbor in that situation? Well, the, the guy who helped the beaten man. And then Jesus says, go and do likewise. So a neighbor is not, we don't define a neighbor in terms of proximity. Oh, the guy across the street is my neighbor, but the guy down the block isn't. A neighbor is whoever we can be a neighbor to. And so we love, not because we feel it, not because even necessarily that people deserve it, but we love because we've first been loved by God. And now we share that love with others, especially with those in need who are around us. And in that interesting way of looking at it that I talked about before, and certainly this past Sunday as well, that's how we love God. You know, we love God by loving our neighbor. And by seeing in our neighbor um, God's presence and the face of Christ. And so I want to close with that prayer for this week from Taking Faith Home that really brings that home and, and, and emphasizes it. Let us pray. Almighty God, teach us your ways that we may live together in peace and see Jesus in the face of others. Amen. Well, have a great day. It's Friday. It's the end of the work week. Hope uh, your week has gone well, and we'll see you one more time this week tomorrow. But until then, take care. Bye-bye.